Today I'm going to talk about a couple of different applied batch macro techniques that I use in Alteryx to work on workflows and projects that have a monthly cadence. It could be a weekly cadence, could be a daily cadence, whatever, whatever you want, but in this example it's going to be a monthly cadence. And this is a big data source that we're going to be looking at where uh, more than a half a billion records come in maybe more than a billion come in every month or two. It's 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 a pretty large amount. Um, and that's why I break it down by the month so I can handle the influx of, uh, of records. Now, in this project, there is one data source, but there are multiple aspects to that data source where I'm computing different types of things. And I'm gonna show two aspects to this today. I'm gonna show number one, how I'll use a batch macro to go out and pull strategic data that I need for each month. The strategic data is uh, related to each of the types of calculations that I do. And then I'll show, uh, so the first, the first example is gonna be how do we pull the data using a, a Hive query. The second example then will be how do we set up to actually run the macro? How do we uh, run the, the analysis, the computations of one of those key measures? So get started with um, what I do is I typically set up a set up a um, an Excel sheet that has each month of record that I'm interested in. I usually will use a column called run it and it'll be a zero or one and I'll use a filter off of that. So if it's a one, I want to run it. If it's a zero, I don't. And so I'm doing testing right now on this one. So I'm running the previous month of August, 2021. And then I need this mid month date, which is the date in the center of the month for a query, as you'll see. And then I have an output file name down here. Um, so if you notice that in Excel, um, these, each of these formulas over here reference this date, this mid-month date, or the month, I think it actually references column B. So when we look at this formula here, you can see there's a column uh, reference here for B and a column for B. And one of the standards that I use is a three-digit month underscore year because I'm spanning multiple years in this example. So once you uh, set this type of structure up, all you have to do is copy the formulas down if you want to add more rows, if you want to move forward in time. But you can see that I've got a couple of years, almost three years of data here that I'm going to be running. I'm going to go pull three, almost three years of data with one, uh, essentially running one batch command, one batch macro. So this is the first case. And what what does that look like in Alteryx? Well, um, I have a driver. So one of the things I normally do is when I'm, when I have the program that drives the macro, I call it a driver program. So this is driver pulling cash purchase. So, uh, what that is, is I'll, I'll connect to the Excel sheet, which is what the one I just showed you with the run of being equal to one and I'll filter it and I'll send that record into the macro. So in this case, this is very simple. This is just, let's go get the data. So if we look at this macro, then it's a very simple concept. I've got a query here with um, some dates in there. This is the mid-month date that I pointed out earlier. And other than that, nothing is gonna change. It's just dynamic, changing those dates. And then it's going to do an in-database pull it's going to stream it to the local machine. Here, I load the data types from a file. And then I write the output file to a YXDB. And what, what changes here is just the output file name. So uh, in terms of the controls of the macro, here we have the mid-month date, which gets an update. So the mid-month date that's stored within the query here gets changed dynamically. And the second thing that gets changed over here is just simply the output file name. And that, that output file name, here it is being changed. 
gets <clears throat> automatically created once again back over here by Excel. So all I'm doing is just passing through the output file name of the YXDB. So that's very simple best macro operation um, for pulling data. Now, let's take one look at one that's maybe a little bit more complicated. Here's an example of um, a more complicated approach, but you'll see that the basics are the same, where I have a run it column. I have column for optional output. I've got the month and the month string. And then I have a whole series of dynamically created input files, output files, many different types. I've got a beginning date and an ending date for each month. So when I create a new record of this, I, I basically just have to change over here the month and just change the dates over here. Everything else is dynamically updated. When, um, and as we go out towards the right, you see there's a whole series of output files. Again, all of the stuff dynamically uh, created. So these things get read in into another driver program. And I'll go back into Alteryx and show that example. <clears throat> so we'll look, take a look at one of these. Same type of thing, a very simple driver program that's just going to read an example that I just showed you with all of those input columns. Got all those things in there. And if run it is one, then it's going to come in here and run get sent into the macro. There's a lot of mapping fields that have to be mapped. And what you want to do is when you create these, one of the best practices that I have is if we open this, um, open this macro, there's qu quite a bit that goes on in this macro. I don't want to really talk about it, but basically um, you'll see here, each one of these control parameters get you, you get you name them so main input file so when I name this main input file and I go back into my Excel sheet there's main input file so when it comes time to do the mapping of that that many fields that you have for example all of these fields choose the main input file it's called main input file. So if you keep a standard that way, if you name everything the same, both in Excel and in Alteryx, then it's very simple to map those. You don't have to really remember what they do. And so each one of those uh, columns in Excel have to do with either input files or output files, um, or maybe some dynamic settings for dates, like beginning date, ending date type thing. And th these are all just simple, standard uh, batch macro type operations with the control parameters and the action tool to dynamically change whatever it is that you're changing. And in this particular case, there's a lot of action that goes on in this batch macro. This is not the most complicated one, uh, but there's a lot of action going on here. So by having this structure, of repeatability from month to month to month. One of the best advantages of that is if I ever have to go back and rerun a month, let's say that there's been a data update, a historical data update, I can go back and strategically just pick that one month, put run it to one, and I can run that, or I can run the whole sequence over again if I want to. But this structure of um, setting up batch macros to run things periodically is something I've been doing for a long time. I basically don't, uh, I haven't really shown it much, but the, having the framework in mind like this, where you set up these standards, it's very quick to develop them, very easy for me to run them, very easy to control and maintain. And one of the things uh, that this is going to lead to in, in, in terms of another training video is organization. This forces you to be organized. And when I mean, what I say, what I mean by that is when 
when I go to my projects, I organize them starting off by with, with the directory of projects that I organize by year. So here's the year 2020. So this is when the, when the work began. And then I look in incentives, for example, and I look in, I've got an Altrix folder. I've got a data folder. I've got a hyper folder for Tableau hyper files. I've got output files. I've got images. I've got all, everything in here has a re, there's a reason for each one of them. And within each one of these, for example, I look at data, then I break down the input and the output by the month. So that's why those files are automatically generated like that. So I can instantly find what I'm looking for. There's no ambiguity. Being organized from um, an analytics project point of view is absolutely essential when you're running a lot of different projects, a lot of different programs like I do. You have uh, repeatability from year to year. You have organization, makes everything easy. So anyway, that's uh, training video for batch macros and running um, periodic, whether it be monthly or daily or weekly workflows. Thanks for listening.